going straight to that fight. I mean, before um, the weekend, uh, talking about the game, the fight between Anthony Joshua and Andy Ruiz, I, for one, I, I put all my money on Anthony Joshua to win this one because I felt like the first fight was a bit of... Um, I wouldn't say Anthony Joshua underrated Andy Ruiz, but I felt like he wasn't just in good form to face Andy Ruiz. But this, this time around, we saw a different Anthony Joshua in the boxing ring. Well, the truth of the matter is that Anthony Joshua and his camp underrated uh, Andy Ruiz in oh. the first fight. That was basically what happened. And uh, after losing the belt, he got the judge of his life. Mm. I mean, it's not right being called a champion when you ain't got your belt. your belt. So that is why he had to go back to the uh, gym, work on himself, make sure that he's psychologically ready mm. for this fight. Uh, and that is basically what happened. And he was able to at least prove to the whole world that uh, being called the world champion for I mean, four belts is not, uh, it's not just uh, a hype that is actually worth it and he merits it mm. by coming into the ring and doing what he needed to do, box, jab, mm. then get it into a bro. Mm. Now, you know, so, so much he felt like um, he was a bit corny in the boxing ring that they felt like he didn't give his best. They felt like he was running away from where the fight was happening against uh, Andy Ruiz. But at the end of the day, he came out victorious. Now, I saw a post um, on uh, social media about Anthony Joshua. He said one of the reasons why he lost the first fight was because he wasn't in good shape, talking about his health now. Basically, that was what happened. This guy was not in good shape, but because the team, you know, his promoter is actually his manager. Mm. So they've put in so much money, so much publicity. So they weren't ready to at least lose all that money. <clears throat> and they felt, uh, and the Ruiz is an unknown. Of course, it's box. It's got about 33, uh, 30, 32 wins as of that time, mm -hmm. one loss. So they just felt, okay, he's just coming to like, it will be a stroll in the park for, for Joshua. Joshua. And under three rounds, it's going to be over. Joshua, I, I got good uh, from good source in this camp. Mm -hmm. I, I got it on good authority that he was not feeling too well. But they just said it's going to be a stroll in the park. So go and do it. Three rounds, the guy is out. Mm -hmm. Not knowing that <laughs> the guy was actually hungry for that title. Yeah. As a, he came in as a late replacement, mm -hmm. so they felt he wouldn't do anything spectacular. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately for them, it does happen once in a while. As Imran Man, nobody gave him the opportunity, the belief that he's going to beat Lennox yeah. Lewis. Yeah. He did. Yep. Same thing with Leon Spinks. Mm -hmm. So automatically, it does happen like that. That day, uh, Anthony was not just psychologically ready. And what the team should have done was withdraw him from that fight and uh, risk a do. But because they felt, uh, the height, everything's got all these advantages against uh, Andy Ruiz. And, and the, then, and the, I mean, what's it called? Anthony Joshua has beaten somebody who has beaten uh, Andy Ruiz. Ruiz. So they just felt, okay, let's go there and have fun. And that was their undoing. Wow. I like this thing you said because, like you mentioned, they underestimated Ruiz one. And this, like you mentioned, the Raman case and the Lenny Ruiz, that was one of the biggest shockers in the world of boxing. Sure, and people forget that, like in the 70s, was that um, uh, that Ruiz? black guy, um, not even Sugar Ray. Okay. Sugar, Sugar Ray came and took that um, Puerto Rican's belt. Okay. That, that was like the biggest thing ever. Mm -hmm. It was just after a rumble in the jungle, and everybody was looking for the biggest thing after the Alis and the Formans. Mm -hmm. And that guy was the main guy then, especially for Latin America. Okay. And then he came from nowhere. Sugar Ray just finished him up mm -hmm. and they had to come back again. It was one of those. No mass, no mass fight. Yes, no mass, no mass. Okay. Exactly. And what people forget from there is you never underestimate. Just because someone has a funky style mm -hmm. doesn't mean his style will not beat yours. When Joshua was supposed to be prepping for this particular fight, mm -hmm. his initial contender, he dropped out Gary a Lina. month before. Exactly. And if you see Gary's body mass, it was what um, Joshua was prepped for. Mm -hmm. He was bulked up. He was big. Because when you go at a big boxer, you want to be in big form, especially exactly. if you have the form for it. Mm -hmm. But um, the fat boy, Riz, like he said, people called him. Mm -hmm. he, he was a bit nibble. Mm -hmm. He wasn't like heavy footed. He wasn't leg footed. Mm -hmm. And that was something that Joshua couldn't handle as at the time. True. <laughs> the, the team actually did not study uh, and lose his fight. Not and he is all. big, no doubt about that. He's fat. But for a fat guy, his hands are so fast Very that before you know what's happening, mm. he's boom, boom, boom. And the next thing is that he's also a, a brawler. He wants to go into a brawl with you. True. He's not waiting to box you because he ain't got all the attributes of, of a good boxer. boxer. So he wants to brawl. Mm -hmm. All this they did not prepare for. Mm -hmm. So in this second coming, they went to prepare for all mm -hmm. that. Understand? And that is actually why uh, Rich couldn't do anything in this 
last fight. Mm. Now, we, we, we also know about um, his next, because uh, me for a boxing fan, I, I don't know, um, sentimentally now, uh, based on sentiment, I, I wouldn't want to see, in as much as the, the boxing fans out there would want to see a big fight like Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder, mm. but I don't think I'm ready to see that yet. Yeah. Because I've, I've, seen, I've seen Wilder and like his name, I think he, he boxes like a wild cat. Mm. And against an Anthony Joshua, who is a gentleman mm. on the boxing ring, I, I don't know if, I, I don't know what it takes for, boxing, for him to fight. Boxing is nice. brain. And mm -hmm. that was why Muhammad Ali was able to at least beat all the big bars when he was doing his fighting, mm. understand? You don't need to go in there. Yes, knockouts are good when it does happen, but boxing is not all about knockouts. Mm. It's all about your leg work, your footwork, I mean, the way you conduct yourself, I think, and the way you jab and uh, move. Mm. Mohamed Ali, given everything that Joe Foreman has, mm -hmm. shouldn't beat Joe Foreman, uh, George Foreman. Mm -hmm. George Foreman, mm -hmm. yeah. Given all the attributes of George Foreman, he, sh he, he shouldn't. He wouldn't, he wouldn't be able to if he hadn't used his brain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have to plan. Right now, there's no hiding place for Anthony. Why? Because Wilder wants those four belts. Yes, he has the ultimate belt as the biggest belt, which is WBC, mm -hmm. but he wants the four belts. And who is holding these four belts? It's Joshua. Anthony Joshua. I'm saying to you, and I believe that, Based on what Anthony did on Saturday, if the two of them do go into the ring, I would uh, put my bet on uh, Anthony to beat Wilder. Wilder is the one punch person. Yep. Gives you one blow seven die. Mm -hmm. That is if he's able to nick you. Exactly. Listen, himself and uh, what's it called? Otis. Yes. The first fight, Otis was beating him from round one. Mm. That is, he was beating Wilder yep. to round 10. But by round 10, he lost con uh, concentration and the blow came. It's good night. Wow. Same thing happened <laughs> the second one. Mm -hmm. It was beaten from Ramon to Ramon seven. Mm -hmm. But with Joshua, I believe Joshua is as tall as, of course, uh, what's it called? One is two inches it's taller, taller, taller. But they are both tall, unlike uh, Otis, and he's taller than Otis. And from what he did on Saturday, it's shown that he's not a complete boxer. I don't see him not evading, uh, what's it called? Uh, wow. While that's big shot for the old 12 rounds. I mm. probably okay. want to go from another angle okay. because you know you mentioned that he is a one punch guy. Initially, mm. our very own uh, Ife Ajagba was just like that when he started at Commonwealth and otherwise. Mm -hmm. And we saw how it did him at the last Olympics when he tried to hold on for that one punch. Mm -hmm. A smart boxer will always run around you, give you body shots and still get exactly. the points away. But he has evolved his game. Unlike the bronze bomber, Wilder, he doesn't evolve his game. Mm -hmm. He's very confident, so confident that just after the Otis game fight, it was all about most guys have to be, you know, perfect for all 12 it's rounds. For mm -hmm. me, all I just need is two seconds, boah, every burst. <laughs> and, you know, and Tyson, Mike Tyson would like to say that, you know, everybody has a plan until you get into the ring. Definitely. So when you, when you look at a guy like Joshua, I'm not sure he wants to outlast on that on that kind of ground. Mm -hmm. I've seen what he did this weekend. He has shown that he can evolve. In fact, in my book, between him and Fury, those are the two guys that can evolve, but faster on Joshua, because what Joshua did, he changed his style totally. Exactly, definitely. And I began to see some wildiness to so it. Was it was too standard. That's mm -hmm. why I believe that if he now goes into the ring with Wilder, which definitely must happen, should happen next mm -hmm. year, mm -hmm. I don't see him not surpassing, uh, I mean, beating uh, Wilder. Wilder. Because this is now a complete boxer. The first, he, he was believing that he was invincible all this mm. while. He's mm. got four belts. So he didn't prepare well enough for Andy Ruiz. Mm. Now that he has seen that look on, to be called this champion and not be mocked by a champion without a belt, mm -hmm. he needs to at least be at his top. Wilder will always lean back to give you one blow. Understand? Mm. So if you are time. able to at least watch him, because definitely all this thing is telepathic. When you're about to do something extraordinary in the ring, it's going to show on your uh, face. Of kind of of so if they are both, if Anthony concentrates on fighting and looking at Wilder's every move, I don't see how he's not going to beat Wilder. Because he's also got a good punch. True. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. Anthony's got as good a punch as Wilder do. But Wilder's punch is said to be much more heavier. Mm -hmm. But exactly. if Anthony, look at the fight against uh, Klitschko. Klitschko. Oof. That was a fight. True. I totally agree fight. with you. I totally agree with you. Now, um, looking at that now, um, there's something called leave when your vision is loudest. Mm. Should Anthony Joshua check it? We've seen a couple of boxers <laughs> do this. Should he just say, okay, I'm done. 
fighting. No, Let he, me needs, hold he, my, need, he needs, he needs to, to fight. He needs to, apart from just fighting, he's not a legend in the boxing right now. Mm. He needs to get into the legendary uh, And sport. he has what it takes to achieve that. Definitely, definitely. He's still young, at 30. I mean, it's got about five years going for him or mm-hmm. six. Mm-hmm. I mean, when did uh, uh, Mayweather retire? Mm. He retired at 20. Understand, right? And we are saying that this guy, it's no, no Ojoro in it. It's his real age of 30. He has nothing less than six years to go. Understand, at least five, six years. So, and in those five, six years, he needs to cement his name as a legend of the sport. He ain't got the WBC belt, mm-hmm. which is the main belt. Yes. Understand, there are five numbers, five titles, apart from the other ones, understand, yeah. right? The real five titles are the WBA, WBO, IBF, IBU, IBU, and the WBC. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, if in, in ranking right now, Anthony Joshua is ranked higher than uh, Dante. Okay. Because he has four beds. Four He's fought more technically sound opponents than Wilder, well well understand? And he has four numbers as the four belts, which compared to uh, WBC, well, okay. uh, WBC, Wilder has won. But at the end of the day, the WBC is still the ultimate belt, and he needs it. Mm-hmm. It's just that he's not as much interested in running after Wilder as Wilder is it's interested in running after because he's got four belts. But then okay. again, why should he? He is the champ. Yeah. If you fight in Europe, Europe has the most standardized boxers, as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. When you go to Northern America and Southern America, what you have are brawlers. Mm-hmm. And they don't really intrude, do much for the sports. Mm-hmm. All they just do is give um, boxing a little bit of flash and a little bit of notoriety. Mm-hmm. But look at the European boxers, the ones that are based out of the Americas. Those mm-hmm. ones, they fix themselves. They are the ones that you study at school. Mm. When you say, okay, how do I learn how to shadow box? How do I know how to position myself? They are the ones you learn. Then when you want to learn how to make yourself a showman, you go to the Americans. Mm. So as far as I'm concerned, if there's going to be anything that's going to make them fight anytime soon, like you said, in December, probably because of the money and ending of the year, just like when they package this one this, this one, year, yeah. it's most likely December, but it's not a smart move to rush it because you see, like you said, he has like five, six years. So I don't think that Joshua will probably be having like 12 fights in his career and he has to pick each fight if not it will become like a Samuel Peters mm. Samuel Peters <laughs> fought yesterday mm. and that's our former WBC he had the ultimate title yeah. he fought yesterday he fought in Canada and then he was beaten in first round one punch by a guy that's not even up to stand my respect, for, like, my respect for Samuel yeah he did a lot but the fact is don't compare Samuel with Anthony AJ. Mm. Anthony don't let's go there, but we have to go there. Anthony's really age is 30. Mm, understand, right? Okay, okay. It's no, what I mean, there's no party, party, no understand, no jury in it. I'm not insinuating others, mm. uh, whatever. But I know that, in truth, uh, Asama Peter is past his prime, mm. understand? No, right now, he's still saying about 35, 36, yeah, but 36. we know that, I know that. At least, I know his amateur background. Mm. And you don't become what he has become. Well, what it became mm-hmm. as at that time and still be in boxing. Exactly. So that's just the truth. Mm-hmm. So, and, and to be candid, uh, this guy called Anthony has four top belts. He's under a right management that are mm-hmm. steering him the way he should mm-hmm. go. Mm-hmm. Four years, two years after now, Wada to Anthony will not be the reigning. It's, it's not going to be, it's not they are not going to be there forever. Mm-hmm. So, this by next year, they are primed and ripe, ripe to. Face each other. Mm-hmm. And then Very again, true. self, you have to look at that category. They don't have a lot of flashy guys. Okay. So if you exactly. let them fight too quickly, who is going to be the next thing? Because <laughs> Klitschko has retired. Mm-hmm. And Fury, yes, he comes and goes, the Gypsy King, but not so much. The Dillian Whites of the world, we know that they are all talk, no really. Mm-hmm. I can't really sit and watch their, their fight and be like, ah, this guy, this guy. True. These are the only two contenders mm-hmm. now that actually, or rather three, that, that, that yeah. give that category yeah. levels. levels. Compared to in the 90s. When and we had a lot of contenders for that. There was exactly. only few, there was Dykes. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, there were so many sexy names that they used to put them in movies because they couldn't give them enough fights. <laughs> they used exactly. to make them actors. True. So, but now they don't have that. So, mm. for now, I think I'm fine with where we are. Anthony Chop, you are back home to Shagamo. Maybe we can give you a wife finally. <laughs> and, you know, rest my case. Uh, let's let, bring, bring it back home now. This will be the last question for me now. Uh, we've looked at um, the growth of uh, these boxers from Wilder to Anthony Joshua, also uh, their training procedures. The camp that they belong to. Our, our fighters here in Nigeria, if you ask me, I'll be like, okay, the one I can actually say that is um, mostly out there is if you are Jaguar. Two days ago, I was somewhere in Oniru, I saw a couple of guys training street boxers, and I'm like, what would it take for these guys 
to get to that level where they can compete for great honor as, as big as um, the WBC? Because most of these guys, I feel like they don't have the right training procedure, the right technique, the right trainers to put, to put them through the process and getting them, getting them to that level that they can achieve. What can we actually do to better our boxing in Nigeria? To be candid with you, Ife Ajaba also has another person mm. in Ife Apoche. Apoche. Yeah, they go together. Exactly. Apoche is cruiserweight. Mm -hmm. Ajaba is everywhere. And I can say to you right now, Ajaba is actually with the management team of uh, no, of Wilder. Uh, mm -hmm. of Wilder. So they are in the same camp. The manager and promoter of Wilder well, is equally the manager and promoter of Ajaba. So and they, are, they are planning him to take over from Wilder. Well, 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 I mean, that's their, uh, their, their, their plan. Mm. Uh, coming back home, if an Ajaba could leave Nigeria, I know when Ajaba started boxing, okay. his first bout, I mean, at the stadium, that is when he came to uh, compete at the national level, I was there. Understand, right? And I know what happened to him. He actually didn't make the team, his first fight. But by the second time that he came, with all the knowledge impacted in him and his reach, he was able to beat his opponent, Blue Black. So the fact is, one thing we need to do is make sure that our boxers, the American boxers, by the age of 18, 19, 20, even at 16, 17, you go represent the country at the Olympics, mm -hmm. at any international meet once, as soon as you come back, you turn pro. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be in amateur till you are 35, which is basically what is happening right now. Mm -hmm. And that is what is killing our boxers. When they go representing, if Ayuga and uh, Aboche had been cited by Chelfinko mm -hmm. and then being invited, yeah. they will still be in Nigeria wanting to go again for another Olympics. Olympics. And that's for four years. So if you do an Olympics for uh, what is it called, uh, four, four times, that's 12 years already of your life. Mm -hmm. They don't do it like that. Mm -hmm. So for our boxers to be able to compete properly against their players around the world, opportunity comes, you represent the country once mm -hmm. at any international meet, understand? Especially the Olympics. Of course, you go for all African games. Mm -hmm. If you excel, go for the Olympics. And after that, Tom Pro, not mm -hmm. being kept at the amateur uh, cadre for 12, 15 years, 12, 16 years. Wow. At that time, you're already spent. Mm -hmm. So that is why we are not able to compete properly favorably with the international ones now. But with Ajegba and Apoche, they left early. They are doing pretty well now. Mm. Wow. Thank you very much for your time and uh, sparing your thoughts on uh, boxing and especially the fight between Anthony Joshua and Andy Ruiz. Come on, Lord. Thank you. All right. We would like to have you here again at some time, probably this time around to talk about football, but it might not just be today. I know he's a Chelsea fan, uh, but I don't want to put him on the, I don't want to put him on the hot seat.